Hey everyone, I'm back and my previous tutorial kind of got me thinking. Uh, if you guys missed that, it was the horizontal scrolling web page. And that horizontal scrolling web page made me think, uh, what about navigation? Because uh, uh, navigation across the top of the page isn't super conducive to a horizontal scrolling web page. And some of the contest entries used a vertical side navigation. And uh, it reminded me that a vertical side navigation can be a really useful tool. It can be necessary with horizontal scrolling web pages. And uh, it looks kind of nice. I mean, I think this looks pretty cool and it remains on the screen as I scroll. So it's good and convenient. Uh, and I think if you want to be able to create this, you might as well do it right, and I've got some tips for you that'll help you do it right uh, the first time without having to learn the hard way. Uh, you'll run into problems such as this uncentered text in the middle if you go and you just try to create this and learn the hard way. So I'm going to show you how to fix issues like that uh, in a quick, simple way. So let's head back to my demo here, and let me take the finished navigation uh, off of our demonstration here. So I've just got the blank page, right? And uh, this page has some content on it and you'll notice it also has a bunch of grid lines on it that is the 960 grid from museresources.com so if you want to start off in a similar place that I'm starting off head over to museresources.com go to templates and uh, I'm working with the 960 grid that's a 960 pixel wide page with 12 columns and those columns really help you with lining things up and um, positioning things and sizing things proportionally in a way that just takes a lot of the work off of your own shoulders. And uh, one of the ways I'm going to leverage that is when I create my side navigation, I'm going to go out to this first guideline here, and that's going to give me a 170 pixel wide navigation. And the, the width of the navigation doesn't matter so much yet, but the number is going to matter when I go to center everything else up on the page. Because right now, this swimmy bunny text is in the center of the overall page you can see that it falls between these guidelines here and if I drag it it kinda locks into place right there um, it's good now but as soon as I have my side navigation it kinda needs to go to the right because I'm gonna put the navigation on the left and that should therefore be pushing on things to to center them with the rest of the content to the right of the side navigation so let me start by making the box I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool from the toolbar at the top and I'm going to click and drag from the corner of the screen. And I'm clicking and dragging from the corner of the total content area. I'm not clicking and dragging from the edge of the page. This blue line here, this very first one, is the edge of the page. I'm going all the way out to where Muse represents the edge of the browser uh, and the edge of the browser fill. So uh, I'm lining up there for a reason. We'll get there in a moment. But I'm going to go back to my regular cursor here now. And I'm going to stretch this vertically. And watch how far I go. Some of you may already know why I'm doing this. The reason I'm stretching this so far is because I want this to fill even really, really tall computer screens. And uh, like last time in the horizontal scrolling web page tutorial, I talked about the 27 inch iMac being a really tall screen. And if you don't design according to that, then your website might look pretty silly if viewed on a 27 inch iMac. And not everyone has a 27 inch iMac, but still, uh, you don't want to look like a fool when somebody does. So I'm going to go and take the stroke off of this box. I just got rid of that. And I'll go and check out what kind of fill colors I have to choose from here. I've got a few blues that I've sampled here. Um, I believe that is the blue that I want, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the lighter of the two. And you guys can pick whatever color you want, obviously. But uh, the other thing I want to mention is I'm designing this on my home page, but you don't want to design this on your homepage. Well, maybe you want to design it on your homepage, but this will eventually end up on a master page because I'm going to want that navigation to be persistent throughout the site. I want it to be on this page, this page, this page, and this page. If you design it here, you get to see what it looks like as you're designing it, which is pretty nice. You get to see it alongside your content. Uh, and that is the reason that I'm designing it here on the homepage and not on the master page because the master page has no content. I can't really tell if it's going to look good. So I'm going to design it on home, and then I'm going to copy and paste it over or cut and paste it over to the master page so it shows up on all the other pages of the, of the site. So now that I've got this created, I went all the way down to 1,600 pixels. 
uh, because that's going to cover the entire height of an IMAX screen. And I dragged over to the first line, which as I drag, I can see here, the width is 170 pixels, height is 1600 pixels. So that 170, I have to take a mental note of that 170 because I'll, I'll need that in a little bit. But the idea is I'm creating a container here. I'm creating a, a container that will fill the entire height of even the tallest computer screen. And then I'm going to come over to the widgets library and I'm going to place the actual navigation in that bar. The navigation is not going to be super duper tall because we want that to fit on even smaller computer screens. Uh, but the idea is the colored bar will expand across the entire screen and the buttons will take up a small amount of space on that bar. So I'm going to go to menus and I'm going to look for vertical. And again, this is the widgets library. It's not the regular library. If you go to library, that's where you'll see uh, Moolib files that maybe you've downloaded from museresources.com. If you've got the icon Megapack, that's where you're going to see that. Uh, and then the widgets library is where the built-in Muse widgets are. So I'm going to choose the horse, or rather the vertical widget. I'm going to choose the vertical navigation widget because the buttons are stacked on top of one another vertically. And I'm going to drag that onto my page. It's not the right size, it's not the right shape, but I can take my time positioning that. I'm going to snap it over to the left, shrink it a little bit, and stretch it vertically. What's really cool about this is, you may have noticed, it put home, swimwear, lounge, and accessories. It automatically picked up on all the pages of my website. It references back to this whole site map here that you see in the plan view. So I don't really have to think about creating the buttons from scratch. They're already there. The thing I do have to worry about is the gap between them and how tall the whole menu is. And uh, the gap between them was something that really troubled me for a minute because I didn't see of any way to shrink that gap and it didn't let me go in and size and position these uh, manually. So it turns out you have to find the spacing panel. And on the spacing panel, you'll see gutter H and V, that's horizontal and vertical. The vertical gutter is two pixels, so I can turn that down to one pixel, or I can turn it up and see how I get a big gap between them. I'm going to turn mine down to just one pixel in between each button. And now I think it's in a better place. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on one of the boxes, and they're all going to change together. But I'm going to start by going up here and choosing the active state and deleting it. The mouse down state, deleting it. The rollover state, deleting it. So now I've just got my normal state. I'm going to add those back in, but I, I want to start from, uh, from a blank slate. So now that I've got my normal state selected, I'm going to choose a fill color, and I'm going to go with this slightly darker blue. See, it's nice and complementary to its background color. And these are colors that I set up ahead of time, but um, you guys can choose freely for yourselves. So... Now that I've got the buttons created, I can go into the text and I can style the text differently if I'd like. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command T to pull up the text panel and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to switch it to Palatino, which looks very similar to Georgia, but a little bit more classy in my opinion. And if I preview it in the browser, it's looking almost right, except it's not all the way on the left hand side like it's supposed to be. And uh, if I scale the browser, it goes off the screen. So it's not really behaving itself, but that's because we haven't gotten to that step yet. So now that I've got the buttons, uh, I could go and do the rollover states. I'll, I'll, I might as well, while we're here, just do the rollover state with a, with a lighter blue. And uh, now that we're here, we need to worry about the positioning of the bar and of the text. And I'm also going to have a copy of this Swimmy Bunny logo over there. I'm going to option drag it and I'm going to bring it to the front. I personally like the keyboard shortcut to bring it to the front. I'm going to use shift, command, or control, and the right bracket, and that's going to jump to the front. And I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Pardon me for not being more prepared. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke that's on that box. There we go. So now I got my swimmy bunny text. And going back to preview in the browser, they're lined up with one another, they stick together, but again, they're not sticking to the side of the browser. So what we want to do now is I'm going to click on the background box, I'm going to hold shift and click on the swimmy bunny box, and I'm going to click on the navigation. So all of these objects are now selected, and I'm going to go to the top bar, this little control bar, and I'm going to choose pin in the top left hand corner. That means stick to the top of the browser and stick to the left hand side of the browser. So no matter where the page content goes, stay put on the top left. So if I preview in the browser now, look at that. 
it's staying on the left and it's staying at the top even if I scroll up and down. So the pinning accomplishes quite a lot. That's a really important step to not forget. And what's cool about pinning is the pinning with an object that doesn't fit on the screen allows the browser to kind of ignore the fact that it doesn't fit on the screen. When I get to the bottom, it doesn't want to keep scrolling because there's more nav bar. See, the nav bar doesn't keep going down. It wants to keep scrolling because there's more content uh, on the main page area. So it, there's no interference, essentially. The fact that this is 1,600 pixels tall doesn't interfere with anything once it's been pinned. So that's one of the advantages of pinning objects. So now that I've done this, uh, sort of an important little tip here. I'm going to go and I'm going to hit cut. Uh, you can do that from the edit menu or using the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to cut this off of the page. I'm going to go back to the plan view and go to my master page that all the others are linked to. And I'm going to paste it in. And when I paste it in, I do have to reposition it where it was unless I use a different method of pasting. This is kind of cool. If you go to edit and you choose paste in place, that means paste it where it was where it came from so I don't have to reposition it so if you guys aren't familiar with that trick that's one of my favorite tricks edit and then paste in place when you're going from one page to another so now that I've pasted it in place looks like all is well but you guys may have noticed that I have these red frames showing up when I hover over these things you guys might be thinking oh that's weird mine is blue not red I wonder why his is red it has to do with your layers so if you click over to the layers panel you can see that I have here a layer called layer one, which is what you all have. That's why all your bounding boxes are blue. And then I've gone and I've created a new layer with the little, uh, it almost looks like a sticky note button in the bottom right hand corner of that panel. And that new layer I've named on top. And anything that I want to be on top of everything else has to go on that layer. So it floats above everything else on the other pages. All of my other page designs are gonna be primarily or entirely on layer one but this navigation needs to stay on top. So it's gonna remain in this on top layer. I named it on top, you guys can name it whatever you want. And you can see here that I've got all of that content on that layer. If yours is not on your new layer that you created, if it's still on layer one, you can select all these things and you can do a right click and you can say move to layer and then you can move it to layer on top. That's why I named mine on top. So when I go to move to layer, I don't have to remember which is which. It just shows me the name of them. So that's pretty cool. If I move it to layer one, you can see it's blue now. And if I do the right click again and go to on top, it turns to a red bounding box. So I can tell that it's going to stay on top. And now that it's on the master page, when I go back to here, you can see it appears on all of my other pages. And because it's on my layer two called on top, it's going to stay on top of everything. I don't have to worry about layer order because all these other layers on the page, uh, except for this one, that's a mistake, all of these other layers are going to be on layer one, so I don't have to worry about any layering conflicts because this is on its own entire layer above everything else. So the swimmy bunny text here, that's what I had mentioned before, wasn't going to appear centered anymore. Let's preview it in the browser. You can see especially when my browser is narrowed down, it's too far to the left right it's too far to the left it's not centered with the content because the content now has been pushed over by the navigation without really being pushed over uh, it's just kind of obscured the left hand side and made it look like things aren't lined up anymore so easiest way to do this I love this remember that number 170 from earlier my navigation bar was 170 pixels wide being that it's 170 pixels wide all I need to do is nudge any object on my canvas over uh, with the exception of 100% width objects like my, my photos here go across the entire browser. So those don't count. But this text box, this is an object that's sitting on my page that needs to be nudged to the right. And the magic number is half of however wide your navigation is. So being that my navigation is 170 pixels wide, Swimmy Bunny needs to go 85 pixels to the right. So sounds like I've got some math to do, right? I'm going to go over to transform and I can see the X position of this box. That's how far this box is from the left hand side of the page. It's 395 pixels over. I need to add 85 to that. And if you've watched all of my tutorials or if you've watched uh, a select few, you may have picked up on this trick where I can just add plus 85 to the box that says the X position. And when I hit return, it jumps over 85 pixels automatically. 
goes to 480 in my case, and I don't have to do any math. I type the math, and Muse takes care of it for me. So now if I preview it in the browser, now it's perfectly centered, and as I expand or shrink the width of my browser window, it stays perfectly centered. I've effectively compensated for the width of my vertical navigation on the left-hand side. So looks like there are no browser issues whatsoever. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. It may have been a little slow-paced, may have been a little boring for the more advanced folks. But hopefully you picked up on a trick or two. And if you didn't know about the Muse resources uh, downloads like that template, the 960 grid, uh, anyone who wants to make aesthetically balanced web pages without putting in a ton of effort, go and download this 960 grid. It's a free download from museresources.com, which I created for you guys to go along with these tutorials. And if you're enjoying these tutorials, please subscribe because I will have more cool stuff coming soon. Thanks, guys.